What's good, YouTube? Welcome to Crocker House Rock Wireless. And today we got another QA video, so let's get to it. I wanted to start this video off by saying thank you guys for all of your support. Uh, we are very close to a thousand subscribers. Once we hit that thousand, I will be doing a giveaway. I'm not sure what I will be. Uh, giving away per se, but we will be doing a giveaway once we hit a thousand subscribers um, So we appreciate you guys support make sure you guys do like and comment on this video and be sure to hit that subscribe button uh, ASAP you might as well just do it right now uh, Be sure to follow us on Instagram, but yeah, like I've mentioned in the videos before uh, we are going to start doing these Q&A videos every Wednesday just because of the huge support and the questions that you guys have for me I've got to start to start doing that on a weekly basis but yeah, let's jump right into it. So the first question we got is from one of our subscribers uh, by the name of Rottweiler Queen Sasha. Um, they basically wanted to know if I know any good breeders in New York. Um, it's going to be a two-part question, by the way. So first one is, do I know any good breeders in New York? The, sex one, the second one is going to be, can I breed my female at 18 to 24 months? Um, so the answer to the first part, um, to be honest with you, I don't know any Rottweiler breeders in New York. But that is completely okay and fine because I can ship dogs to you uh, no matter where you guys are located at. Um, I do not ship to India or any, any locations like that. But outside of those countries, um, I can get a dog to you. So it doesn't matter if you're in New York, Texas, Vegas, wherever you're at, I can get a dog to you. Um, the second one is that, um, yes, you can breed your female 18 months, but I strongly suggest that you do um prelims for hips and elbows and i'm pretty sure you already done your GLPP. if you haven't you need to go do that asap because you can do that at no matter what age the dog is um but before you breed that dog you definitely should do the prelims just as so the second question is for one of my subscribers his name is henry chavez um he's basically asking me he says you see that i have artificial grass and pea gravel uh, he wants to know if that's going to help prevent parvo attacking. Um, to answer that part, no. It, I don't think it's going to prevent anything. I literally got an artificial grass so they can have a nice cool spot to lay down on. And it's very appealing. It looks nice. Um, and I got the, pre the pea gravel for easy poop cleanup. Uh, it's a lot easier than the regular gravel. I don't throw as much pea gravel away like I was doing with the regular rocks that I had. Um, so yeah, and then he wants to know, do I vaccine my own puppies? Yes, I do. I do all my own vaccines. I'm actually in my whelping room right now where I keep my vaccines in my vaccine refrigerator. Uh, I've got my whelping box right here. We're just getting her area set up uh, since we just confirmed last week. But yeah, so I do do my own uh, vaccines. Um, and no, I do not think the pea gravel or the grass is going to do anything as far as helping um, prevent parvo or anything like that. I think the only benefit about it is that it's easier to clean maybe. That might help it a little bit, but no, I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Next question we got is from a subscriber. His name is uh, Chavo Sushi, I believe. Uh, he's asking about ear taping. In my previous video, I had said that uh, I feel like fly ears can make or break your dog, and he wants to know what I meant by that. Uh, for me personally, outside of the pedigree, uh, what makes you buy a dog is the appearance of the dog. So for me, I think dogs that have fly ears, I, I, I don't think they're, I don't think it looks attractive. I think it's very ugly. So I personally wouldn't even buy a dog from, I wouldn't buy a puppy from a dog that have fly ears, and I definitely wouldn't buy a puppy that have fly ears. The next question we got from one of our subscribers, uh, he goes by, uh, I think it's X Zoo. He wants to know at what age can he breed his stud. Uh, I would say probably. The earliest I would breed a stud would be around that 14 to 16 month mark, um, but that would be only after I've done the prelims uh, for OFA or if I had a dog that was from a different country and they do their their, uh, their hip and elbow certifications at 12 months. I mean, I believe it's 14 months when they do theirs actually in Serbia. Um, so that would be the only way that I would do that. But if you don't do the prelims, JLPP, the basic health testing, uh, definitely don't breed your dog no earlier than, than 24 months when you know you can get the officials but if you know what you're doing and you get the prelims and everything comes back great on those prelims then I say you can breed your dog around 14 to 16 months as far as the male goes my next question is actually from a breeder that's located here in Arizona I believe he breeds bullies super cool guy I actually got in contact with him uh, on Instagram after he asked me this question uh, but basically uh, his his name is uh, Zulu Nation he wanted to know if he can come and check out the kennels uh, in person. 
Um, and I do not actually allow that unless one, you've already sent a deposit and you locked in on your puppy and your puppy is at least uh, four weeks of age just to keep um, protection of my dogs and make sure that they don't catch any type of parvo or anything like that. Um, and then two is if I were to be doing a stud service. That's the only time that I allow people just to come to my house. Um, it's, it is during COVID right now too. So we're, we're taking every precaution that we can to keep us and the dogs safe. Um, as you know, I got a wife and kids, so definitely want to keep them protected as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, so typically, no, I do not allow people just to randomly come to my home, check out my kennels. That's why I actually do these YouTube videos so you can actually see what we do. Uh, our next question is, is coming from one of my subscribers. Her name is Angela Marie. Uh, she wanted to know how I got connected with a broker. Um, so the way I got connected with a broker is actually harder for me just because I'm located in Arizona and it is COVID time when I was actually importing my dogs. Um, so I actually couldn't get any dog shipped here to Arizona. So everything had to go to LAX. Um, but basically I just hit Google um, and start searching for brokers that actually work through LAX. Or once you're in contact with your breeder, they will give you contact information to the brokers that they usually work with when they ship dogs here to America. Um, so the biggest thing is you can either Google it or you know rely on your breeder or you can reach out on the dog forum and ask people, hey, what are the good brokers that you guys are using? Uh, depending on wherever state, whatever state you're located in. So if you're in LA, I can help you out with that. Message me on Instagram or, or I can respond back here uh, on YouTube to let you know what broker I use and I'll give you their contact information. Um, or you can message me on Instagram or if you're not in uh, Los Angeles, uh, best thing to do is to hit Google or reach out on the dog forums so you can actually get a good broker that's already been used before. I appreciate that question. That's a great one. Next question we got from one of my subscribers. His name is Michael Hall. Um, and he asked, when you receive the SBI paperwork, um, do you have to have them switch it into your name or do they come uh, registered to you? So the first thing you got to do when you receive your dog that's registered on a different uh, kennel club, uh, especially if you're getting a dog imported from a different country, you got to go on the APC website, download the foreign dog registration application, fill that out. Um, as long as your dog comes from a, you know, a known country or a country that, that's trusted, within the uh, Rottweiler world or community through AKC, you won't have any issues uh, registering them, but no, they do not come registered to your name through AKC. I wish they did, but they don't. Uh, it's definitely another step that you gotta go through and another fee you have to pay, but it's all worth it if you, you went you know to a different country to get better quality. So this dog. next question I have, it comes from uh, Mr. Yak, man. This is the question slash complaint that my wife has all the time. So basically, he wanted to know, um, how do I take time to take vacation since I have multiple dogs here at a time? How do I, I relieve myself from these responsibilities? Um, short answer is, is basically you don't, uh, unless you have a kennel partner, or for me, I have my wife. If I have to go and do a business trip uh, without her, I'll have her stay home and watch the dogs for a day or two for me, or I'll have my little brother come over um, and we can do a family vacation. But Outside of that, man, you, you pretty much stuck to your responsibilities. Um, these dogs are like kids to me, so, you know, you got to be with them 24-7. You wouldn't just leave your kid with anybody, uh, just like I won't leave my dogs with anybody. So, so a very, very great question. My, my wife actually laughed when I had to told her I'm going to use this question in my video. This last question I have comes from a subscriber that I do not know how to pronounce his or her name, but that's fine. It's going to be it's going to be right here either way. Um, but they want to know when is a good time uh, to do an ultrasound. Uh, I've seen different answers on this, but I usually try to wait until about 35 days to get a decent view of the puppies, like I just did the ultrasound video uh, last Friday, a couple days ago, basically. Um, there she was right around that 33 to 35 day mark. Uh, but honestly, the best time to do it, probably around 40, day 45, so all those puppies will be fully developed. Um, what, if there is puppies there, all of them should be able to be seen for the most part, unless they're hidden or tucked away, but you'll still be able to see all of them. Uh, biggest thing is just waiting until past that 30 day mark. I would say just because you will have some puppies that won't be able to be seen if you're earlier than that. So this is the end of the video. I appreciate you guys' uh, questions and comments and actually tuning in on my YouTube channel. Like I said previously, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to us. Um, and follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook, at Proctor House Rottweiler. Um, as you see, I am in my wealthy room. 
I'm in the process of getting her whelping box and everything set up, so we will be doing a video on how we prepare and get ready for to whelp litters. Um, it's going to be a mixture of things that I learned back in the day when I was actually breeding uh, where I was the first time around and then some things that I found on YouTube and from other videos and other people that I've gained knowledge from since I came back into the dog world because it's completely different. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in and we are out.